this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Velvet and Fur Christmas Stocking, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need. To make the Velvet and Fur Christmas Stocking, you'll need Bernat Baby Velvet, Red Heart Huga Fur, and a USH 5mm hook. This one is by Furls. You'll also, of course, need stitch markers, scissors, a yarn needle, all the usual crochet tools. Let's go ahead and take a look at the finished stocking. Okay, the velvet and fur Christmas stocking is made in essentially two parts with the velvet and then the topper with the fur is added on. So let me go ahead and unfold this here. It's actually just kind of a long cuff that's then folded over for the fur topper. And before you add that though, like I say, you do make two stocking pieces, um, identical ones, and then crochet around all the sides, except of course the top, we want it to be able to open uh, to put those two pieces together. So you're making two of these velvet pieces and they're actually worked sideways from the long end here out towards the toe. So you'll make two of these velvet pieces, crochet all the way around, then crochet them together, leaving of course the tops open like so, so it's, you know, a functional stocking. And then you simply crochet right around the top with the huga fur, add a couple increases about halfway through so you can get a really nice fold over cuff. Finish that up, fold that over, and then we just add a little hang tag, um, an optional one if you want it there, with the velvet as well. Or you could even use a piece of ribbon if you prefer, whatever you like. But it's a pretty simple construction, pretty simple stitches. I do want to point out that they are relatively tight stitches. We're using a USH hook with a yarn here. The velvet is officially a four medium worsted, but I'm working pretty tightly. These are all single crochet and half double crochet stitches. And this will help with the velvet yarn to keep any sort of warming or pulling at bay. With the velvet yarn, it really helps to work a little extra tightly. And then I want to point out with the um, top first section, which I'll be demoing here with the different colors, so it's a little bit easier to see. I don't even uh, really list a stitch count for this. You're just going to crochet evenly around the top here. The actual stitch count doesn't matter as long as you're working about even. And then when you make those increases, you can just evenly distribute those by eyeball. Again, nobody can see the individual stitches in this stuff, so that makes it a little more flexible. You don't have to worry so much. As long as it looks good, you're on the right track. So let's go ahead and get started crocheting our velvet and fur Christmas stocking. All right, so to begin our velvet and fur Christmas stocking, we're going to make two stocking pieces using Bernat Baby Velvet. So each one is identical. And for the first row, we start with a slip knot and then we chain 42. I'm not gonna chain a full 42 just for the sake of time here um, because these are all pretty basic stitches and a pretty simple pattern when it all comes together. After you've chained 42, you want to skip the chain closest to the hook and then single crochet in each remaining chain across for a total of 41 single crochets. I like to work into the back hump of the stitch, but you can work into the part that is most comfortable for you. I just find working into that back part rather than under the top two loops gives me a little bit better edge when it comes time to add my edging. So as I say, we're going to skip the stitch closest to the hook and go to the stitch after that. It can be a little tricky to see your stitches with this yarn. So just take your time and think about you know, just really look at it and see how wide each one of those little stitches as you're making them is. So you can sort of eyeball where each of those loops should be. So we're just going to work our way across with single crochets all the way across row one until you have 41 single crochets made. I do want to point out at this time that if you get pretty far into this pattern and realize, oh no, I'm down a stitch, I only have 40 or maybe a 42 um, go ahead and go with it. This pattern, the number of stitches was just picked to make it work and look the right size. You don't have to have a particular number of stitches for it to actually work. There's no stitch multiple or anything like that. So as long as you like the end result, if you're off a stitch or two, it doesn't matter. So just go on and crochet your row one and I will see you at the end of row one. Okay, so at the end of row one, as I said, you should have 41 stitches, 41 single crochets specifically. Now, you'll notice I have put a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of my row here. This is something that just makes it a little bit easier as you crochet with this yarn, or really any project, to always make sure that you're working into the first and last stitch of each row. It helps you make those really great sides so you don't accidentally end up missing a stitch, that, which can be very easy to do here, especially down at the end with these short stitches. So let's go ahead and begin row two. 
Row two is chain one and half double crochet in each stitch across until one stitch remains, then two half double crochets in that last stitch. So we're going to go from 41 stitches to 42, but the stitches themselves are pretty simple. We start with a chain one, then I'm going to turn and I'm going to go ahead and remove that stitch marker and work a half double crochet right in that first stitch. Then I can go ahead and put that stitch marker right back in there to mark the first stitch of this row. And then as I say, I'm just going to half double crochet in each stitch across until one stitch is left. And because of my stitch marker, that will be really easy to see which stitch that is. So I will see you as we get almost to the end there of row two. Okay, so I've almost finished row two. I just have one stitch remaining, our marked stitch. So in that last stitch, I go on to go ahead and work two half double crochets. And if it's easier to do that with the stitch marker out, you can take it out first or you can leave it in there while you work those two last stitches, whatever works for you. Then after I've made that second one, then I can move that stitch marker up. Now, if you're working that next row right away, like we are here, you might not wanna go ahead and put the stitch marker in the last stitch, because you've already got a really good view of that. But if you need to put it down and come back to this project, it can still be really helpful. Of course, if you put it down, I'd also recommend putting a stitch marker in that active loop so it doesn't pull out. Let's go ahead though and begin row three. Row three, very simple. We simply chain one, and single crochet in each stitch across. And this is going to be how most of our odd numbered rows are made until we get to making sort of the toe foot portion of our stocking. So we just chain one, like I said, and single crochet in each stitch across till we get to the end of row three. So that would be 42 stitches again. And I will see you at the end of row three. Okay, so at the end of row three, you should again have 42 stitches. And at the end of row three, we've made our two row repeat that's going to take us all the way through the leg until we're ready to just make the toe. So we just repeat rows two and three. Row two is the half double crochet row with two at the end. And row three is just single crochet evenly across for 20 rows. So we have 20 rows total. We'll have 51 stitches and we will have ended on a row two repeat. So that's one of the rows with the two half double crochets. So when you have made row 20, you'll end with that two half double crochets in the last stitch and 51 stitches total. And then you'll be ready for row 21. So let's go ahead and start row 21 together. Okay, so obviously I haven't worked 20 rows, but we're gonna go ahead and say I have worked 20 rows. I've ended on a half double crochet row, a row two repeat. So I've got my two half double crochets there, right there in that final stitch. So to make row 21, it's gonna be pretty simple or rather, well, definitely pretty simple and very similar what I was going to say to the other rows we've been doing so far. But now, like I say, we're just starting the foot. So rather than single crocheting in each stitch across, we're just going to single crochet in the first 20 stitches, leaving the remaining stitches unworked. So go ahead and single crochet right there in your first stitch. So that's number one. And then just 19 more, which should take you about halfway across. Remember, we've got 51 stitches total, so we're making 20 of them into the foot. So as soon as you've cro single crocheted 20, the rest of those stitches in that row are going to remain unworked and we we'll, won't touch those again until we're ready to add our edging. So go ahead and single crochet 20 stitches for row 21. All right, so at the end of row 21, you should have 20 stitches and a little bit more than the second half of that stocking should be remaining unworked. We're gonna go ahead though and chain one and turn for row 22. So we'll come back to work the other way here. Like I say, this will be the leg of our stocking. We're just making the foot now. So for row 22, we're going to start with half double crochet two together. And there are a few different ways you can make your half double crochet two together. Um, the standard way would be to yarn over, go in the first stitch or the indicated stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over again, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and then pull through all those loops on your hook. However, as you can see, that makes a really puffy stitch. And we're trying to make a decrease here, not make a big, you know, puffy thing here at the beginning. So what I like to do is work my half double crochet decreases, um, not quite the standard way, but I find that these work out and give a much more, um, much more similar look to an actual half double crochet. It doesn't puff up and stick out as much, which with this really puffy Lux yarn uh, is definitely more of a concern. So here's how I like to do my half double crochet two together for this first stitch. 
I'm going to go ahead and treat it as if it was a single crochet two together. So I'll go into that first stitch, pull up my loop, pull it up nice and high. We don't want to keep it too low. Then go into that second stitch, pull up that loop, and then I'll yarn over and pull through all three. And the reason I do it this way is because if you think about a standard half double crochet, we're basically pulling through three loops on a hook. When we decrease as if it were a single crochet two together, that final stitch there ends up looking a lot more like a half double crochet rather than getting overly puffy. So that is the half double crochet two together, however you'd like to do it in those first two stitches. And then we'll just continue by half double crocheting in each stitch across until one stitch remains here at the bottom of our foot. And then at that very last stitch, we'll work two half double crochets. So we begin this row with a decrease, but then we end it with an increase. So the actual stitch count will remain the same because we're losing a stitch at the beginning, but gaining one at the end. So I'm almost at the end here. I've got that final marked stitch, and then I can go ahead and work two stitches in there. I probably want to go back and put a stitch marker in the first stitch of this row too, that decrease I made back there, since we left behind our other stitch marker at the top of our leg. There we go. So then at the end of row 22, you should again have 20 stitches because you decreased here, but you increased at the other end. So row 23 is going to be exactly the same as row 21. We just chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. So I will see you at the end of row 23. All right, so at the end of row 23, you should again have 20 stitches since we just worked evenly. Rows 24 through 29 are just repeats of rows 22 and 23. Remember row 22 is our half double crochet row, which now starts with a decrease and ends with an increase. And then row 23 is just working even in single crochet. So at the end of row 29, you should still have 20 stitches in your row. So let's go ahead and move on to row 30. All right, now row 30 is going to start the same as our previous even numbered uh, half double crochet rows here. We're going to chain one and half double crochet two together, but this time we're going to do it twice. So let me go ahead and pull this stitch marker out of the way. There we are. And then I will half double crochet in those first two stitches. There we are. So there's our first stitch. I can put my stitch marker right back in there. And then I am going to half double crochet two together in the next two stitches. So again, using however you prefer to do your half double crochet decreases, like so. After that, we're just going to single, or excuse me, half double crochet in each remaining stitch until four stitches remain. So obviously on your full size stocking, that's going to be quite a few more than I have here. Let me go ahead and see, I might be there already. I've got one, two, three, and four. So as you can see, after you've got that first uh, chain row made, it gets a little bit easier to see your stitches. A lot of times it's just a matter of pushing in with your hook and feeling, feeling where it gives to see where that stitch is. So as soon as you've got four stitches remaining on row 30, we're going to half double crochet two together twice again. So same thing we did at the beginning, we're going to do here at the end. We are finally decreasing to create our rounded toe shape. So at this end, we'll work a half double crochet two together in those first two stitches there. And then in those last two, another half double crochet, two together. So this will take us from 20 stitches in the previous row to 16 stitches at the end of row 30. There we are. And now we are decreasing at both ends so we can start getting that rounded toe shape. Row 31 is going to be the same as the other odd numbered rows. We just chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. So then rows 32 through 34, we just keep working like these last two rows. Single crochet across, then do the two half double crochet decreases at each end. So at the end of row 34, which is a half double crochet row, uh, you will have a uh, row 30 rep, basically, you'll have only eight stitches left, which should be pretty close to what I've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've only got six, but at the end of row 34, you should have eight. So then we'll be ready for row 35. Okay, and row 35 is actually the edging. It's the edging round. 
What we're going to do is chain one and then single crochet evenly all the way around the stocking. So it's just single crocheting all the way around all the edges. Now, as you can see, this is sort of our weird little abbreviated one, but on the full size stocking with eight stitches in that last row, it does create a really beautiful toe, which we can look at here in a minute. But as I say, we're just going to single crochet all the way around. So that's working into the edge, and I do have a separate tutorial for that if needed. I do want to point out though, that you're going to want to work three single crochets at this corner for the heel right here. If we turn it sort of this way, so it looks like a standard stocking, we can see here's our toe curve. So we're going to want to work three single crochets at that corner, three single crochets at each of the corners up here, because we're going to work all the way around each one of these pieces. This is each individual stocking piece right now, not when you've got them conjoined together or sewn together. We're just going to work all the way around the edging, three, 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 then we get to this little decrease right here. It can help to actually work a single crochet to, uh, two together, actually just like the half double crochet ones I just showed. But in these two stitches right here, that helps create and keep that really nice um, indent right there where the uh, front of the leg meets the top of the foot, I guess you'd say. Um, if need be, then you can also add increases along the curve here. I found that adding about four single crochet increases um, just four extra single crochets worked along the curve of that toe really helped maintain that great toe line doesn't matter which stitches you work them into just sort of where there there and there um, definitely eyeball it there's not a specific number of stitches needed as you work around but to try and work really evenly it will make it easier to join your two pieces together Okay, so here we can take a look at the full-sized finished stocking. As I say, there's only eight stitches in this last round, but full size, that makes a really nice curve. And you can just sort of add those extra stitches as needed right around the toe as you're coming around. So once you've got both of those pieces made, basically two of these, what we're going to want to do is line them up together. And you can see right here, here's one piece and here's the other. And you can just use stitch markers to go through both layers and sort of link them up so that they match up perfectly or as perfectly as you can get it. And then to assemble it, you just single crochet through both of those layers. So if I pull this back up right here and get my loop back on the hook here, basically you've got two layers of crochet, it'd be two separate pieces in the actual stocking. But you're just going to line those up as best you can. Use stitch markers to hold them together and then single crochet through both of those layers to create your seam. As I say, go all the way around, just make sure you don't attach the top two layers here at the very top of the leg, or you won't be able to use your stocking. So once you've got those two pieces put together, we're ready to add our fur. All right, so as I said, we're going to be using Huga fur for the fur topper. I'm gonna to go ahead and demo in this slate blue rather than the white color, so it's a little bit easier to see, but I do wanna show you again how this works in the finished stocking. Basically, we're just going to single crochet, or excuse me, half double crochet, evenly right around the top of the stocking. And if I push the fur up here, you can see, we just work right across in each stitch. Because we've done those edgings that we did all the way around the stocking, you'll have a really nice edge here to work into of single crochets rather than having to work into the sides of the rows. So that'll make it a little bit easier to see each of those stitches and just try and work as evenly as you can. One stitch in each stitch around the top. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of that together. Okay, here we've got our little swatch that's going to represent the top of our stocking. Now you'll need to decide uh, which way you like your toe to point. Some people like them pointed to the right, some people like them pointed to the left, and up till now it hasn't mattered, but you need to decide which one you want to be in front so that you can join to the center of the back. So if your stocking is flat this way, and let's say this is the front and this is the back, this is where we want to go ahead and join for our fur. Just go ahead and pick any stitch approximately in the middle. It really is hard to see your seam in this, so if you end up actually joining to the wrong side, you probably won't be able to tell anyway. But just in case, just kind of pick one in the middle and that's going to be our center point where we join our fur. So we're just going to go ahead and join with a chain one or a slip stitch or however you like to join your new yarn here. There we go. And then, like I say, we're going to half double crochet in each stitch around. So this yarn um, can be a little tricky to see your stitches in. I ex absolutely recommend continuing to use stitch markers if you like to. I wouldn't worry too much about counting them. You just wanna make sure you're working as evenly as you can. And here I'm using the dark blue so that it's a little easier to see against our white backdrop. 
uh, when I was crocheting with the white hygge fur, I would recommend actually having something dark on your lap. Normally, I recommend for textured yarns having something really light on your lap, so you can see. Um, but with white yarn, that doesn't work as well. You'll want to use something uh, darker on your lap, but also then really good lighting. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can actually see a little bit of the base yarn under here so that you can see your stitches a little bit, uh, at least in person, and with some really good, again, some really good lighting. So for the first round here of the fur, we're just going to half double crochet in each stitch around the top of the stocking. And that is how the first several rows, I'm having trouble getting into that one, there we go. The first several rows of this fur topping are done. We're just going to single crochet around. That one does not want to go through. Let's try that again. Obviously, it just needs a little bit of patience. There we go, now it went right through. So just half double crochet all the way around for round one, and then again for rounds two through six. You can just join and half double crochet around again. The more you work with this yarn, the easier it is to see a little bit and feel and sort of sense where each one of those stitches should be. About the same width as your previous stitches. We've got that end there, so let me tuck that in out of the way. And basically we're just going to, like I say, continue half double crocheting all the way around, join, and then do a few more rounds. I found that I wanted to go to round six. If you like your cuff a little taller, you can do that however you like. But then in round seven, we'll be doing just a little bit of increasing to help it fold over a little better. So that is it for round one. You can see I've gotten all the way around, working one stitch in each stitch, at least as far as I can tell. And then I can kind of slip my hook right in there and join. And then if I wanted to, it might be a good idea, go ahead and put a stitch marker in the final stitch of that round to help me find it on the next round again. And then, like I say, just continue half double crocheting even for about six rounds. Uh, if you find you made seven or you get to the end, you were like, oh no, I only made five. Again, doesn't really matter. It's just about the look. This isn't um, a particular row count or a stitch count or anything like that. Okay, so moving on to round seven. Uh, well, like I say, rounds one through six are all the same. Round seven, we're just going to add a few increases to make that fold over a little easier. So if we look at our stocking here from the top, I'll pull it apart here a little bit. You can see we've got our back, we've got our front, we've got our two edges. We just want to increase four times. So the easiest way to do that is to just put an extra half double crochet in there, put another half double crochet along that side, put a half double crochet on the other edge, and then another half double crochet right before you join. And that way your half double crochet will be evenly distributed. Again, it's really hard to see the individual stitches, so don't worry about getting them perfectly spaced. It's just having a few extra stitches in that round to make it easier to fold over. After that, you'll just continue crocheting evenly till you've made about 13 rounds. And then you'll be able to fold it over right at round six or round seven when you had those increases, and you'll have a beautiful cuff on top of your stocking. Okay, so if we take another look at the finished cuff here, you can see I got about halfway up and then it gets ever so slightly wider right there. That's those four extra stitches and then it's just even again. So we can just fold it right on over and have the top of our stocking. The only thing left is the optional uh, hanging tab. It's just Bernat Baby Velvet, chain 25, skip the chain closest to the hook, single crochet in each remaining stitch for 24 stitches, then chain one and single crochet across. So just two rows of 24 single crochet. If you want to make it longer or shorter to fit your own needs, very simple to do. Just a couple rows of single crochet and then sew it right to the top of the stocking. And that's how to crochet the velvet and fur Christmas stocking. I hope this video has helped you make your own Christmas stocking. If it has, please give it a like. If you have any questions about it, please leave those in the comments. I'm always happy to help. And again, please go to the link in the description for the written pattern, as well as links to all the other supplies you need for this pattern. It was a lot of fun sharing it with you today. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you enjoy the Moogly channel, please do subscribe. It really helps us out. Thanks so much for watching and happy holidays, everybody.